All right, good evening to each and every one of you guys. Um, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, been on in a while. Um, so we just thank God for you all just coming in, checking in on tonight. So I'll give you guys a few moments for everyone to check in. Uh, for the ones that was on Zoom and here in the Sunday School Review, um, they had quite a bit to uh, discuss and talk about. So we just thank God for them uh, being faithful to that. So again, I'll just give some ones a few moments to jump on board here. I know we're running a little bit behind. All right, see you. A few have jumped on board, so I don't see any comments at this moment, so um, we'll go from there. All right. Let's go to a quick word of prayer. Turn up, Father God, we just thank you um, for everything that you've done. We just thank you for all the many blessings that you pour into each and every one of our lives. So, Father, we just ask you just to continue just to guide our hearts and minds to be more directed on your word today, Father. So, God, we just ask you just continue just to um, look into your, your holy Bible today, God, that you may be equipping each and every one of us to know more about you today, Father. So, God, we just thank you for the examples that you placed in your word today, God, that we can look at these particular things and we all can possibly grow from the circumstances that these people have went through. So, God, continue just to be with each and every one of us on today. For the ones that may be traveling today, God, continue just to be with them that they may make it to their final destination safe and sound. So, God, we thank you tonight. In Jesus' name, we pray to you. Amen. All right. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Sister Tates, uh, Sister Melton, Deacon Wright, Brother McLaurin, Sister Cortez, uh, Minister Harris. And to all the ones that was on the Zoom call, uh, we thank God for each and every one of you all on tonight. All right. Um, we're going to rock and roll. Let's go into um, last time I was on board, uh, we looked at the life of Moses. And we, we saw some things that in the life of Moses that can apply to our lives. All right. So another individual that I want to bring up and, and deal with and go over some things with him on today. I want to look at the life of Abraham. And let's just see if there are some things that we all can learn from um, from the life of Abraham. And there's about six particular things that we're going to pull out on tonight um, that the life of Abraham can show to each and every one of us. Okay. Um, if you understand who Abraham is in the Bible, he's the father of all nations. Uh, God promised him these particular things. Um, and we can just see that everything still holds true to what God promised um, Abram as an Abraham. All right. Good to see uh, Sister Hamilton, Sister Blair, again, Sister Baker. All right. Let's go to Genesis uh, 22 on tonight. Genesis 22. Uh, we can go all the way back through, um, and you can see um, the book of Genesis when it comes to Abram, Abraham. Um, it can stretch far um, back as maybe like the 12th chapter um, in the book of Genesis. All right. So we see so many different things um, when it comes to Abraham. And there's so many other things that we can read to come up into all these particular things. It even goes back further than the 12th chapter. Um, I mean, it, it goes a good little ways. But we'll get the genealogy uh, coming from after the 10th chapter. And so then that's how we'll learn more about Abram, which his name turned into Abraham uh, after the encounter with God. Okay. So we come up to the 22nd chapter um, and we understand that God promised Abraham all of these particular things that he's going to be the father of the nation. And we have to understand that Abraham is very old at this moment in time. All right. His wife, Sarah, she's pretty old at this moment in time just as well. So we're talking about past um, giving birth. All right. We're talking about old, old, kind of old. Right. We're talking maybe 80s and 90s, where it's just not common um, for people to be having any, any babies. OK, so. Here we go. God promises Abraham that he's going to be the father of nations, which means that he's got to have some children in order for all these particular things to happen. 
So it sounds kind of uncommon, but these are the things that God promised them, okay? And we get to the point to where in the 21st um, verse, 21st chapter, we'll see that even in Sarah's old age, Abraham's wife, um, God tells her, you know, you're going to have a child, and he did. They had a child uh, by way of Sarah by the name of Isaac, okay? We already know, some of us already know that between Sarah, Abraham, and their maidservant, they had already conjured up another deal to produce a child by way of the, the hand servant, the maid servant, um, Hagar, and they had a child by the name of um, Ishmael. And so it wasn't the promise by way of the way how God had put it in order. But we know how we are as, as people. We always want to do things when God is taking too long or too slow, right? But we have to trust and learn from Abraham that we got to see some things in his life that can help you and I. All right. So here we go. Um, yeah, they had an outside child by the name of Ishmael. Um, the promised child is going to come by way of Sarah in, in her old age. Um, now she is basically the, the only child um, by way of Abraham and Sarah. They named this child Isaac. And then here we come to the 22nd chapter, all right? Good to see Pastor Mays, Sister Watkins, Brother Carl, uh, my cousin Luana, uh, and Sister Fields on tonight. Thank you guys for, for jumping on board. So here we go. Now we up to Genesis 22, all right? Abraham has his only son, Isaac. God has promised him that through Isaac um, that, that you're going to have as far as the stars that you can count, you're going to have that many children, right? How many in the sand is going to have that many children? All these particular things. So God promised Abraham all of these particular things. He has this one child, and now we come to the 22nd chapter of Genesis. All right, you guys are there. I get to see the Colmans on board on tonight also. All right, so you guys are there, right? Genesis 22. Let's read the very first um, verse in Genesis 22. Everybody's Bible may be different, but let's let's read it. All right. It says that God tested Abraham and he said to Abraham, he called his name and all Abraham response was here I am. All right. God called to him. All he said was, here I am. That was his response. All right. And we have to understand that saying, here I am. You're basically saying that whatever God asked of you to do, that you are ready to obey God. Okay. Listen to that particular phrase again. First verse, God calls Abraham because he's about to test him with something. He calls his name Abraham and he said, here I am. I am. In other words, those words mean whatever you want me to do, here I am. I'm willing to do it. I'm willing, I'm ready to obey. Okay? Good to see Sister Guyton on board. Now watch this. Let's jump over to Genesis 46 real quick. And you're gonna see this common theme of people that are ready to obey God. Alright. So let's go to Genesis 46 and 2 real quick. Once you got it, I need some thumbs up somewhere on there. All right, I see one on Zoom, two on Zoom. All right, there we go. Read Genesis 46 and 2 real quick. Tell me what it says. Words sound the same, right? Now, this is Moses. God is calling out to Moses. And Moses says the same exact thing Abraham said. Here I am. Meaning, I'm ready to obey whatever you want, whatever I got to hear from you. You're speaking to me. When I say here I am, meaning I'm ready to do whatever you ask of me to do. All right. Genesis 46 and 2. That's Moses, right? I'm sorry. What? 
I'm sorry. Yeah, Jacob. Yeah, I'm sorry. Jacob. Thank y'all. Thank you. So that's Jacob saying the very same thing. Here I am. All right. Now let's go over to Exodus, the third chapter and the fourth verse. <clears throat> Good to see Reverend Lewis um, and Sister Tangela. Good to see you guys. That was Jacob. Yeah, it was Jacob. Now we're talking. Now we're dealing with Moses. Exodus three and four. But don't lose sight of Genesis 22 because we got to go back to Genesis 22. That's where they're going to be the meat uh, of tonight's topics is going to come from. But I just want to see this theme of, of, of the here I am, meaning it's a response that you're hearing from God and you're ready to obey whatever God entails for you to do. OK, Jacob heard it. He responded. Here I am. And he did instantly whatever God intended for him to do. All right. Abraham said. Here I am. Whatever you're telling me to do, I'm willing to do it. I'm going to do it. All right. Let's go to Moses, the third Exodus, the third chapter and the fourth verse. <clears throat> Exodus three and four. You got it. You read it. You see a common theme. Here I am, all right? All right, I'm just assuming you guys have read it. Okay, so now he tells him, no, now go, and I need you to deliver the Israelites. But the key point of it is, God spoke, Abraham answered, and, did, and was willing to do whatever God told him to do. Jacob answered, willing to do whatever God wanted him to do, and he did it. Moses answered, and he went on and did what God needed him to do. All right, let's go to Samuel. This one's going to be a little tricky. Let's go to 1 Samuel, the third chapter. And we have to understand the key, thing, the, the key thought of is here I am. Because here I am is basically telling God I'm in full obedience to whatever you want me to do. All right, 1 Samuel, 3rd chapter. So if I've gotten into that, I've gotten to it, so you guys should have been there just as, just as well. All right, 1 Samuel, 3rd chapter. <clears throat> Let's look at the 4th verse. All right, listen to what Samuel says. I, I, I like that, Pastor Mays. Now, Samuel was a little boy at this particular time, so you got to catch that even more. So the fourth verse says that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, here I am. All right? So here we go. He's heard a voice. He's responding to it in the moment of obedience. Let's go to the fifth verse. So he ran to Eli, which was the priest, and he said, here I am. For you call me, and he said, I did not call. Lie down again, and he went back and laid down. All right? So even when he went to Eli the priest, by saying, here I am, meaning whatever you want me to do, I'm in obedience of doing it. Okay? Let's go to the sixth verse. Then the Lord called yet again Samuel. Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here I am. For you call me. He answered, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Seven verse tells us, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. He's responding to whatever voice it is. All right. But Samuel is being ready to be obedient to whatever the call is. Okay. Uh, let's go to the eighth verse. <clears throat> And it says, and the Lord called Samuel again the third time. So he arose. He went to Eli and he said, here I am, meaning I'm in full obedience to whatever you want me to do. All right. For you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Now what Eli tells him in the ninth verse, he said, therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down and it shall be. If he calls you, that you must say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. 
So Samuel went down and laid down in his place. All right. 10 verse. Now the Lord came and stood and called as other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, speak for your servant hears. All right. Listen, the key thing of it is here I am is a is a. Uh, uh, it's like a, a invitation to be obedient to whatever the call may be. All right. Last one. We're going to go to the prophet Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah, the sixth chapter. But I want you to catch the whole theme of all of these great individuals all had one thing in common. Whenever God called, they were ready to be obedient to whatever it may be. Okay. Isaiah 6. All right, you got it? Isaiah 6, let's go to the 8th verse. It says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. All right? Here am I should be the phrase that each and every one of us as children of God Ought to be saying when it pertains to God that if God is asking us to do any particular thing, we ought to be willing and obedient to whatever the cause may be to follow and be obedient to God. Listen, God's words gonna let us know and let us show us that obedience is better than sacrifice. We can sacrifice a whole bunch of things, but being obedient to God is the most important thing in each and every one of our lives. All of these great individuals that you can see, we know them by name. We know how great they were. And the key thing that all of them had in common was they were all willing to be obedient to whatever God would have them to be. And that's a story for each and every one of us to grab and learn from. That we ought to be able to tell God, here am I. That whatever it may be, I'm willing to be obedient to whatever the cause or whatever you would have me to be. All right. So we got to understand that when God spoke to all of these individuals, once they knew that it was God, all they ready us to do is just be obedient to his cause. So let's go back to Genesis 22 real quick. You know, it's funny. It's like when God calls, the first three words that come out of your mouth is here, I'm, here, here am I. All right. And that's how we need to be even today. Here I am. All right. So here we go. Abraham heard from God and watch this. He responded appropriately. How many times have we been hearing from God? What I, may we not even sure that we are hearing from God, but God has a way of doing trial and error that sooner or later we can go through some things in life and we'll realize by trial and error we'll soon know the voice of God, all right? And once we know it, and we know that it's God, we ought to be willing to just say, here I am, and I ought to be willing to be obedient to whatever it may be. That's one of the things that we ought to learn from just off the life of Abraham, that not only would he respond to it, but he had responded in a way that he was ready to obey God and whatever it may be. We ought to all have the same response in our heart when it comes to God, all right? Oftentimes, when God reveals his will for us, the word of God is what we hear, all right? And when we become convinced that God is speaking to us through scripture, we ought to respond quickly and obediently just as Abraham did, all right? It's trial and error. And, and, and watch this real quick. I need you to go to 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. Still... Put a pen on Genesis 22. But we have to understand why the Holy Bible has been written for each and every one of us. Why these particular people are jotted down in God's holy word. 1 Corinthians 11 and 1.
You got it? First Corinthians 11 and 1. You got it? Thumbs up? No? Yet? There? Still looking? All right. I got the ones on Zoom. I don't see anybody. Okay. There we go. All right. First Corinthians 11 chapter and the first verse. Listen to what Paul, who we know of in the word of God, listen to what he's telling the church of Corinth. All right. This is how we got to appreciate the life of Paul and we can learn some things from Paul. Verse 1 says, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. All right. Now watch this. Say, now I praise you, brother, that you remember me in all things and keep the tradition just as I delivered them to you. Now watch this. Paul is living a life that he's saying, if you just do what I do, we'll learn so many different things of Christ. Follow me. Do the things that I've done when it, for the sake of Christ. Paul is left in the word of God. He's put in the word of God for us to imitate and look at how he treated God, how he treated the life of Christ and how he went by certain things. All right. This same Paul. Let's go to the book of Philippians real quick. Philippians, the fourth chapter. And listen to what Paul says here. Philippians, the fourth chapter. Listen to what Paul is telling us. While people in the word of God, we ought to choose to grow and get examples from them. All right. Philippians 4 and 9. He tells us, these things which you learn and receive and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. Listen, if we want to be enriched by God, we ought to be able to follow some examples of what some of our patriarchs that's way before us that's left in the word of God that we ought to be able to imitate them and we can learn so many different things of God by way of. It's just not by circumstance that God didn't put these individuals in the word of God in his holy book for us just to read and not take nothing from it. They're here for a reason that we should be able to, to be set as examples, imitate some of the things that they've done for us to understand God way more than what we, what, we, what we need to be. Okay? So it's a reason why we need to look at Moses. It's a reason why we need to look at Abraham. It's a reason why we need to look at Paul. Because by learning and imitating what they've done, it can enrich all of our lives. So the very first thing, go back to Genesis 22. But the very first thing we got to understand with Abraham, what an example, what he is showing us is we ought to be willing to be obedient and obey God. That's one of the things that the life of Abraham is showing us. Obedience is going to always be better than sacrifice. OK, when we went through some of these verses and when God called them, they instantly heard the voice of God and was willing to be obedient to whatever God told them to do. And they heard his voice. They said, here I am. And they did whatever God told them to do. Okay. Let's go back to Genesis 22. So here we go. Not only is Abraham obedient to God. But watch this. Watch something else we're going to learn from him. All right. So that's number one. Abraham, we can learn from the example of him that we learned to be obedient. All right, but watch this, y'all. Here's another thing that we're going to learn from. <clears throat> Listen to this. The second verse in Genesis 22. First verse already tells us that God calls out to Abraham, calls his name. Abraham says here, I am, meaning I'm here. Whatever you want me to do, I'm going to be obedient to whatever you ask me. Now in the second verse, he says, then he said, Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. All right. Listen, another example that Abraham is showing us that not only should we be obedient to God, 
But we ought to obey God even when it don't make sense. Even when it sounds crazy, even when it looks crazy. We got to be obedient to God. Listen to this, y'all. He's saying these are for two reasons. This this is a it's a this is a serious test for Abraham. One, because he got to sacrifice his only son who he loved. So that's already a test in being obedient, and it sounds crazy. Wait a minute. Hold on. I, I got to sacrifice my, 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 my only son, the one that, that I love. But because I'm supposed to love God first, and even though this sounds crazy, I got to still be obedient to God. This is what Abraham is showing us, even if it didn't make sense. He had to show, he's showing us how obedient he is to God. And second, even if it feels like it's irrational, all right? Remember when God repeated to Abraham the covenant that he made with him. And he's telling them, just look toward the heavens and, and count the stars and all this. He said, as much as you can number, that's how your descendants is going to be. And it's kind of like, okay, all right, I got it. I trust you, God. I believe you, God. You what you're telling me? And then later on in, in Genesis, the 21st chapter, around the 12th verse, he's telling them, it's all going to come by way through Isaac. So as Abraham, he's like, okay, man, yeah, this, all right, all right, cool. God, I trust you, all right? So now God is calling him, tells him, be obedient, take your son Isaac, go and sacrifice him to a place that I'm going to tell you later where it actually is, all right? Abraham is showing us that, hey, even when it seems crazy, even when it don't make no sense, I got to be obedient to God. God has been telling you some things and it sounds crazy. It don't make no sense. And we've been so hesitant because it sounds so crazy that we ain't went all the way on obeying God because it didn't make no sense to us. And because it didn't make no sense to us and we know that trial and error, that this is God speaking to me, man, I, I, I just can't, ooh, I, I can't, Mm, I, mm, I, mm, I can't obey this one. This, this, this just seems too crazy. But Abraham, his testimony is here in the book of God for us to look at and to imitate. Not only did he obey God, but watch this, even when it seemed crazy, even when it didn't make no sense, we're going to see that he still obeyed God even when it didn't make no sense. Even after everything God promised him and told him through Isaac, you're going to have all this. But now he's telling me to sacrifice Isaac on a cross. I mean, on a burnt offering. Sounds crazy. But watch how obedient Abraham was. Third verse. Third verse. <clears throat> We got to understand, you know, we say this, 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 this cute uh, Bible verse. We always want to quote Isaiah 55. And uh, you know how we say that um, God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts and, and your ways are not my ways. And, and all these particular things with that, that this God thought process can never compare to none of ours, right? But here's a situation to where Abraham is showing full obedience to God even when it didn't make no sense because his thought process is one particular way. God's process, thought process, is another type of way. And we got to be obedient to trust God's particular way. So listen to how crazy this sounds, just how obedient Abraham is. The third verse says, So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. Listen to this, y'all. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Listen, another thing that we can learn from the life of Abraham, not only we can learn that we got to be obedient to God. Second thing that we can learn that, hey, even we got to obey God, even when it didn't make no sense. And third thing that we can learn from the life of Abraham is when we obey God, 
We shouldn't hesitate or delay about it. Whatever God asks of us to do, we ought to be Johnny on the spot with it. We shouldn't even delay. Look at this. Crazy as it sounds, God's telling Abraham to sacrifice Isaac on a burnt offering. The word of God tells us in the third verse that Abraham rose up early. He didn't contemplate it. He didn't do no delaying. He woke up early and got everything moving. He didn't delay in it. How many times God been speaking to us and we procrastinate, procrastinate, procrastinate. We got to learn from the life of Abraham first to be obedient, be obedient whenever it don't make no sense. And then don't even delay in obeying God. I know it's a, it's a lot to swallow. But this is the life that we need to look at and imitate from it. Watch this. This man got servants. But yet he went out there and chopped up the wood himself. He could have told any of them other servants to go and chop that wood. But maybe because God told him you need to sacrifice all of these things that he was obedient to do it all. He chopped the wood. He got the donkey prepared. Took those two young men with him and Isaac, his son, and now heading to the place where God wanted him to be. In other words, we should not be delaying anything when it comes to being obedient to God. If God say do it, we're supposed to do it. And now we sit back, a lot of us, and I'm even beating up myself as we speaking right now. Because I know God has told me to do a certain thing and I've been delaying it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The life of Abraham can show us to be obedient. It can show us to be obedient even when it don't make no sense. And the life of Abraham is also showing us that I shouldn't delay on obeying God. Whatever it is, I need to do it now. Move on it. Early in the morning, he's got all this prepared. All right? And watch this. On the fourth verse, it says, Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar so off. Listen to this, y'all. They got to travel a long way. Don't you think so many different things would have been going through Abraham's mind? Three days they traveling to go to the place where God told him to go to sacrifice the son that you love. For three days, can you imagine him looking at Isaac? But when you're being obedient to God, we just have to stay obedient to him that God knows what's best. All right. <clears throat> Listen to this. <clears throat> When they get to the place after three days, look at the fifth verse, y'all. Here's another lesson that we can learn from the life of Abraham. One, to obey God. Two, to obey God whenever it don't make no sense. Three, don't delay in obeying God. And here's the fourth thing that we ought to learn from the life of Abraham. <clears throat> We're going to see it nestled right here. In the fifth verse. All right. You got it. Y'all with me? Listen, here's the fourth thing that we got to learn. We can't let nobody interfere with us obeying God. You with me? Abraham didn't let nobody interfere with him obeying God. Well, here you go. Watching it. Watching the fifth verse. It said that Abraham said to his young men, stay here. With the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. Check this out. What if Abraham would have took them two, two guys with him? And what if Abraham would have told them what they about to go do and sacrifice Isaac? Don't you think those two people probably would have been saying, man, are you crazy? What are you trying? What are, man, are you serious? I think those two would have tried to try to talk him out of doing that particular thing. Uh, Y'all don't believe me, right? Y'all don't believe me. Okay, come on. Let's go to um, let's go to Matthew real quick. 
Let's go to Matthew. Uh, put, your, put your hand back on Genesis 22, but let's go to Matthew real quick. Let's go to Matthew, the 16th chapter. When you're trying to obey God, you can't let some other folk interfere with you obeying God. Y'all got it? Matthew 16. One thing Abraham is showing us, you got to learn to obey God. Two, obey him even if it don't make no sense. Three, don't delay in obeying God. And four, stop letting other folk interfere with you obeying God. You know how friends are saying, oh, I don't think that's really going to work. And you get to saying, yeah, you, yeah, you might be right. And we'll let some other folk, even when God then gave you something that sounds crazy, you run it by some other people, they'll talk you out of it. But Abraham is showing us, don't let nobody interfere with you obeying God. All right, let's go to Matthew 16 chapter. Uh, let's go to, let's go around the 20th verse. Matthew 16 and 20 it says, then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. All right. 21. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things from the elders, chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Y'all got it, right? He's being obedient to God. God has told him, this is why I put you on earth. This is your mission, right? You got to go to the cross and die. Y'all with me? Y'all see that, right? Now he's telling the disciples all that, what, what must be done because he's being obedient to God. But watch this, y'all. Go to 22nd verse. 22 says, then Peter took Jesus aside. And begin to rebuke him, saying, Far be it with you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. Then 23 says, But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Jesus is saying, I'm not, I'm not going to let nobody interfere or hinder me from obeying what God wants me to be. Or obeying what God wants me to do. Abraham is showing us the very same thing when he told those two lads, now y'all stay right here. Because had they done went with him, they'd have been trying to tell him, no, you don't want to do that. No, that's 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 crazy. And watch this, we as people, we let people do that to us every time. Every time. We let people just get in the way. God didn't promise you certain particular things. God didn't told you to do all that kind of stuff. But we'll let people get in our ear and hinder us from truly obeying God. That's four things that we got to learn from Abraham. All right? That's four right now. Don't let nobody interfere with you. Obeying God. Obey him, even if it sounds crazy. And obey God quickly. Don't hesitate in any of this type of stuff. Fifth thing that we can learn from, from, from um, Abraham. All right? Watch this. We got to understand that throughout all that we do, we got to understand that our obedience to God is our worship to God. You with me? Here's the worship. Isaac, Abraham just told us this. Watch this fifth verse again. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go up yonder and worship and we will come back to you. Listen, y'all, we got to understand that anytime we are obeying God, that's worship. We think worship is when the music is playing. Or when the choir is singing. We, we, we call that worship. But worship is simply obeying 
whatever God have you to be. Listen, if we got so much God in our heart and we coming to give God all glory and all praise, that's our worship. We shouldn't have to wait until we get to church and, and, and some music get the plan and we want to call that worship. Worship is you always being obedient to God. We don't see no choir or no male chorus or no musical group at this situation where Abraham is going. He said, listen, me and my boy, we going up yonder and we going to worship God. Ain't no piano up there. Ain't no organ up there. Ain't no drums up there. His obedience is his worship. And we got to understand that God wants us to worship him by just simply being obedient to him. That's all it is. Three days of traveling. God told him to sacrifice your, your son that you love, your only son. And for three days, he's still being obedient to God. Then when he gets to the place of where God told him to go, he tells them two boys, y'all stay here because I don't need nobody to interfere with me obeying God. Listen, even if you in church and you got somebody that want to interfere with you listening and obeying God, get your tail up and move to the other side. Don't let nobody interfere with you obeying and worshiping God. All right. These are some things that we can learn from the life of Abraham, right? And watch this. You got to remember what may be going all through Abraham's mind. Man, he promised me this. He promised me through the lineage of, of Isaac. He promised all these particular things, and he's saying that I'm supposed to sacrifice him. So, hey, I'm getting up. I'm going. I'm doing everything God told me to do. I'm not even delaying it. I'm not even going to talk to my wife about it. Hey, I'm just going to saddle up, and we going. Now, watch this. After all of that, he's not letting none of those other people. What if he would have told Sarah? What if he would have told Sarah what he's about to go do? Don't you think that Sarah would have just tried to talk him out of that? Yeah. That's a child too, right? But he's being obedient. Watch this. When he get there, he got to understand that our obedience is nothing but worship, all right? And here we go. Here's the other part that really tripped me out, y'all. Think about this for a second. When we say that our obedience is worship, did y'all know that Isaac worship God just as much and was obedient to God just as much. Think about this. When he gets into the place, let's go to the sixth verse. I'm going to show you the worship that not only did Abraham have, but he's also going to show you the worship that Isaac had. Sixth verse. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. Y'all with me? Listen to this. But Isaac said to Abraham, his father, my father, he said, here I am, my son, I mean, I'm obedient. Then he said, look, the fire and the wood, but where's the lamb for a burnt offering? Isaac Abraham says, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Y'all with me? Here we go. Worship Isaac. Then they came to the place where God had told him. And Abraham bid an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. The Bible don't tell us that Isaac struggled, Isaac fought. The Bible don't tell us none of that. It was almost like Isaac was in full obedience to whatever this, this thing was. He was in full obedience to it. To sit there and see, he must have seen his dad do burnt offerings before. And he didn't even fight it. He was obedient just as well. Our obedience is worship to God, even when it looks crazy. 
Listen, your obedience to God may be even sacrificing your life for God. Obeying God supposed to be that serious. And we can see not only is God, not only is Abraham worshiping God through his obedience, we also see Isaac worshiping God for his obedience. That's why I say you ought to use your body as a living sacrifice. Last thing that we got to learn from this is <clears throat> not only should we obey God off the number one, not only should we obey Him when it only makes sense, not only should we obey Him and we do it swiftly and don't delay, um, not only should we not let other folk um, interfere with us. Delaying and obeying God. <clears throat> and we have to also understand that another thing to learn is our obedience is our worship to God. All right. Um, it's just sad that when we hear worship, we think about singing in the church. But your obedience is the worship that, that, that we're supposed to have. All right. And the last thing for the night is what we should learn from Abraham is that throughout it all, Abraham trusted God. No matter how crazy it looked, no matter how, how absurd it looked, Abraham trusted God. Listen, Abraham trusted God so much. Listen to what he said in the fifth verse. Listen to what he said in the fifth verse. <clears throat> Genesis 22 and 5, listen to the faith that Abraham trusted God with. And Abraham said to the young men, stay here with the donkey. And the lad and I will go up yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. He trusted God so much that no matter everything that was taking place, he said that I trust God enough that we will come back to you. I know I'm going to go take Isaac for a burnt offering. Listen, before Genesis 22, we never heard of nobody being resurrected. We never heard of nobody had died and God then brought them back up to life. We never heard none of that before Genesis 22. But Abraham showed us that I trust God enough that even if I, I'm crazy enough to believe that if I burn this body up, that God will resurrect it. That's just how much Abraham trusted God. Listen. I'm telling these boys, stay here. Man, Isaac, we fit to go, we fit to go worship the Lord, and we're gonna come back. He had to be thinking of all the things that God had promised him by way of Isaac. He trusted God enough that he's saying that, hey, I don't know what God gonna do, but I trust him enough that what he promised me, because the Bible tells me that God don't lie. And if God promised you certain things the same way he promised Abraham all those particular things. You may have to do some stuff that seems crazy. But you got to learn to trust God, even if it is crazy. Abraham might have just been thinking, I trust God enough that if I sacrifice this boy, he got a way of bringing him back. And that ain't never even been done before up until Genesis 22. So what we ought to learn from the life of Isaac, one, obeying, I mean the life of Abraham, obeying, two, obeying even when it don't make no sense, three, don't delay when it comes to obeying God, four, don't let nobody interfere with you being obedient to God. Five, just know that your obedience is your worship to God. And then six, just trust God. If you can let the life of Abraham and we imitate his life, the things that he did for Abraham, he can do the same for each and every one of us. All right. Abraham is written in the word of God. 
for a reason. And just like how Paul say, just be imitators. If we can just do this, what a wonderful and blessed life we may have on this side, or we can all be fulfilled with God on the other side. All right. So again, Abraham, the life of Abraham, we all can learn some things from it. All right. So I thank you on tonight. Hey, we're not going to have Bible study on next Wednesday night, uh, Valentine's Day. And so we figured some people may be going out to dinners and things of that nature. Some people may be cooking and just the true reality. Everybody may not even be fully focused uh, on this on next Wednesday night. All right, so we won't have it on Valentine's Day, but we will resume it on the 21st. All right, all right. So thank you guys for all chiming in on tonight. Um, we just pray that man, all of us can learn from um, this life of Abraham, and and I got some some soul searching to do on stop delaying uh, when it comes to being obedient to God. So I'll work on that just as well. Oh, my other cousin was on tonight. God bless you. Amen. Get to see uh, Dr. Merritt on tonight and my cousin uh, uh, Leatrice. Amen. So both cousins tonight. God bless y'all. God keep you. And uh, I just hope that each and every one of us can get, gather something from the life of Abraham that may help each and every one of us on today. All right. Turn on, Father God, thank you for your word. God, thank you for your insight. So, Father, we just pray that, that the life of Abraham, that we can just see some things in us that each and every one of us need to do better or need to change. So, Father, just give us the strength that we can do these things so that we can know your voice and know that it's truly from you today, God. And we can just be, learn to be more obedient to what it may be. So, God, we just thank you for your word. We just thank you for who you are. We thank you for Christ. And we just thank you for the Holy Spirit that may dwell in each and every one of us today, God, that we can understand and hear your voice more clearly. So, God, we thank you on tonight. In your darling son, Jesus' name, we pray to you. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Get to see Sister Melton just as well. Y'all have a good one.